some people and their titles. Uh, welcome back, everybody. I pray y'all are having a wonderful, blessed weekend as we thank the Most High for so much. My title once again says, Some People and Their Titles. Some people love to talk about their credentials. They love to boast and brag about what they have done, who they are. And you'll see this a lot of times in a lot of churches when they get ready to speak, somebody will introduce them and write out a long list or talk about all their accomplishments, you know. And there's nothing wrong with being confident in yourself. There's nothing wrong with praising others. You know, we're supposed to praise each other in the right way. But we don't never supposed to worship each other. This is a video response back to you, uh, Minister Davis. Um, great email about a lot of ministers or pastors, elders, bishops, doctors with their um, degrees and titles and everything they like to brag about. Not saying that everybody do this, but there are a lot of people when you see them or talk to them, if you mess around and don't call them doctor, if you don't address them as bishop, if you don't address them as apostle, if you don't address them as prophet this, or whatever their title is, they have a problem with you. Now, once again, I'm not saying everybody like this, but there are a lot of people who are like this. And once again, this is my video response back to you. Um, I see this all the time. Um, me, I care nothing for a title. I care nothing for having a title or begging people for money or about dressing all fancy and, and got to have all this stuff like a lot of people got to have. That's not me. And there's nothing wrong with having nice things, but when your nice things start having you, that's the problem. There are too many people now putting their material things and their wealth first. And they use the gospel to get rich. They use the gospel to lie. They use the gospel to benefit themselves while everybody else around them is struggling. Let the church say amen. They title have went to their head. Now, when you study the Bible and, and you get a great look at how our Savior was, how the followers of the Savior was, when you look at the, the great picture, the bigger picture, when you ask yourself, how did John the Baptist dress? How did Yahshua dress? How did they do it in the Bible? Were they trying to get a material gain on things? Or was they more focused on reaching the lost? In Matthew 6, I will save your stars. I was talking about giving. In the first verse, he says, Take heed that ye do not your aims before men to be seen of them. Teach, Holy Spirit. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine aims, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and as they do in the streets, because they want glory of man. So he says, Verily I say unto you that they have received their reward. Hmm. But when thou doest aims, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do it, that thy names be in secret. And that the Father which see them in secret himself shall reward, reward them openly. Now, it's very important to understand that. Because that's showing you the right way of giving. That's showing you not to boast and brag. That's showing you don't be a hypocrite. Don't be like the Pharisees, the, 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 the ones who love to get attention, the ones who love to have all their names called out. They love to have mankind's worship, <laughs> approval, 
Like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong with praising each other. But when you do this like this, you already got your reward. This is what our Father is showing us. When you do good deeds, do not try to show off. Mm. When you start talking about all your credentials and, and how many degrees you got, what school you went to, I, I know too many people like this, man. You can't even have a conversation with them. They, they chest so stuck out what I went to such and such, you know. Man, I've been doing this a long time. I have a degree in this. I have a degree in that. I got my last degree in this, man. I, I'm doctor now. You know, I, I've went overseas and I've did this. They just go on and on and on about what they have done. It seems like they never even tell you about the most time. So he's saying when you do good deeds, don't try to show off. If you do, you won't get your reward from your father in heaven. See, you're getting man's reward. He said, he's just simply saying when you see the poor and you give to the poor, don't, don't blow a loud trumpet. How many times you see people, man, if it wasn't for me, man, that sister's life would be cut off. I made that happen. I'm the one who got that sister that job. Man, if it wasn't for me, man, that brother still be homeless, man. I did all that. I, 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 I. They never mentioned the most time. They want they self, they name to be called out. They always bragging on they self. Our father said, don't be like this. Well, I mean, you know, I, on every Saturday, man, we we down there, man. I'm the one cooking the food, and I'm the one round up everybody, man. We go down there under the bridge. Man, if it wasn't for me, man, them homeless people wouldn't have nothing to eat. Man, I just had a brother last night, man. If I didn't pay his um, water bill, his water be still cut off. They got to tell you everything that they do. They never be quiet about it. Because they're always looking for somebody to pat them on the back. Hmm. That's why our father once again said, don't be like this. The show-offs that I like to call them. They always like to show off. Because they have been, been doing it so long that it have really once again went to their head. In other words, he said, when you give it to the poor, don't even let nobody know about it. Then your gift would be given in secret. You know, you see so many people who are quiet and they blessed. They never talk about nothing. Them the people I love to be around. Because he, he's saying simply, our father saying, I know what you've done in secret. And I will reward you. Proverbs 27 and 2 says, don't brag about yourself. Let other people praise you. Once again, there's nothing wrong with praising each other but to worship each other. You praise your children when they do good, get good grades. You praise your husband and wife when they do something good, but you worship no one but the most time. James chapter 4 and verse 10 says, as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. When you look at somebody like Paul in the Bible, Paul had many credentials. Many accomplishments. Paul set up on the Gamaliel feet. Supposed to be one of the most, uh, I ain't going to say wisest, but one of the best teachers that ever lived, according to when you study on the background and the history of Gamaliel. When you look at Paul, Paul was spoken of very highly. But when he was Saul before his conversion, he thought what he was doing was right. And he was ignorant. He was following the wrong one. He killed many Christians. He put many of them into prison. But he actually thought what he was doing was right. He knew a lot. But all that didn't even matter because what he knew, he didn't know the Holy Spirit. He was persecuting the ones that he should have been loving at first. He should have been reaching out to. That's why when he was converted over to Paul, Versus being solid that old man, his name changed, his ways changed. He was no longer a persecutor of the Christians. But Paul put it like this, man, I can boast and brag all day long. I have many accomplishments. He could have he could have easily just threw his titles and what he have done on people. Paul was not bragging, but Paul was confident. 
And he, he let others know how confident he was in the Holy Spirit. Because something happened to him on that Damascus road that never happened to him before. He was blinded. He didn't eat for a few days. He was hit hard by the Holy Spirit. And after that day, after that moment, I should say, that was his turning point in his life. And he said so much about not bragging. Or if he did, if he did say bragging, he was talking about the most high. See, we have to understand the way these, these words are wrote in the Bible and understand what they really mean in the context when we read, you know, the scriptures. This man could have been the biggest bragger there was. John the Baptist could have bragged if he wanted to because he was the forerunner for our Savior. So many people could have been bragging and bragging and stuck on their little titles in the Bible, but they didn't. The ones who did do it was the hypocrites, the Pharisees. You never saw our Savior bro boast and brag because that turns into ego problems, pride. So when you look at Paul, once again, to boast is the wrong thing to do. All such boasting is evil, once again. All such boasting is evil, as the book of James teaches us. So Paul had to pretty much put all that behind him that he learned, what he knew, all those accomplishments, because he had a bigger picture now looking forward. That's why he said, I got to concentrate on what's in front of me and stop looking at on what's behind me. Paul told the Corinthian believers in 1 Corinthians 14 and 18, he said, I thank the most time. When he was talking about even speaking in tongues, he said, I speak in tongues more than any of y'all. But I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that my voice I might teach others than to speak 10,000 words and confuse people and they don't know what I'm talking about. The reason why I'm saying that, you got so many people who brag about how good they can speak in tongues, how good they can pray, how good they can sing, how good they can play music, how good they can preach, how good that they doing outreach ministry, how good they can fast, how good they can do this and that and that, and you be wondering sometimes, where is the Holy Spirit at in them? Where is it? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, not only is our calling a gift of the Most High, but the Most High also abundantly bestows our gifts beyond that to enable us to carry out what? our responsibilities. That's why our gift is right now for earth. Carry out our responsibilities in the church. And I'm not just I'm not just talking about a building. The most time said all gifts come from above. He has given us, blessed us with these so many gifts for every member of your church building. No, every member of the body. He even said that nobody has worked. Paul said, it's not really nobody that have worked harder than me. I've worked hard. I labored more abundantly than any of y'all. 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. He thought about his credentials once again, his titles, and said, this really don't mean nothing to me. Because once again, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to tell you right now, you can call yourself what you want. It's going to be a whole lot of people with titles that's going to title their way on into the lake of fire. It's going to be a whole lot of people who boast and brag. And on that day, he going to say, depart from me. I never knew you workers of iniquity because they was doing what they was doing for the wrong reason, for the wrong purpose, for the wrong person. Some people really do love man's titles. They love it. 
Some people won't even listen to you if you don't have a title. See, I'm not what you call a church preacher. I know y'all done figured that out by now. JT, you different. Yeah, I'm not what you call a, a, a church preacher. Some people love to say, boy, you one of them good old Baptist preachers. I'm not Baptist. I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not Kojic. I'm not AME. I'm not CME. I'm none of, I'm none of that. I don't care what you want to call me with those titles. I'm none of that. I'm not stuck on that. Well, brother, you was brought up Baptist. I sure was. <laughs> I was brought up in a bunch of confusion. And that's why I got out of confusion. But I'm not what you call, once again, a so-called church preacher. I'm just simple. Once again, I'm not stuck on title. I'm not stuck on how much money you got in your pocket. I'm not stuck on how many members you got, how big your building is, how good your choir sound. I'm not stuck on your anniversary dates. I'm not stuck on your musicals. I'm not stuck on none of that. I'm not stuck on a building, period, because the majority of my work is outside of a building. Just like our Savior. Yeah, he went to the synagogues every now and again, but the majority of our Savior, when he was walking in his ministry, was on the outside of the church. Very important to understand that. Am I knocking what you do in your buildings? No. I'm, I'm painting a bigger picture. It's past a building. Because the real body of Christ, the real body, is what I'm talking about. Are we going out making disciples? I'm, I'm trying to close now. But I'm different. I'm plain. I'm a servant. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm more stuck on Seeing people get delivered. I'm more stuck on reaching out. <laughs> I'm more stuck on seeing the drunk man get clean and 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 repent and come into being a new creature in, in, in Christ. I'm more stuck on seeing the homosexuals get delivered, become straight. I'm more stuck on seeing people get delivered so they can be saved. Somebody catch that later. I'm more stuck on seeing the hoes become godly women. I'm more stuck on seeing the dope dealers and the thugs have a new route in life, change, get delivered. I'm more stuck on seeing the crooked man be made straight. I'm more stuck on seeing some of these church folks become followers of the most high. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. See, this sound a little mean when I'm saying it, but there are many people that's just lost in the building. There are many people that's just stuck on titles. I don't care what you call yourself. Once again, your title does not get you into heaven. Calling yourself a Christian does not get you into heaven. Many people will miss heaven with great titles above their name. See, these titles have messed up so many people in church. People all the time ask me, well, say, brother, who, who told you you can teach? You know, where you come from? Man? Who, who, who baptized you or who ordained you? What school did you go to? Who did you sit up on? Did you go to Southern Baptist? Where did you graduate? What seminary school did you go to? And I laugh because they never say, you know, brother, I can see the Holy Spirit inside of you. I can feel the presence of the Most High when I'm around you. I can tell you being used by the Most High. I can, I can feel something. I can tell there's something different about you. They don't do that because you know why? They more concerned about my title. Man, you can go online and buy a title for yourself right now. You can go online right now and buy doctor and put doctor in front of your name. But what does that do other than make your name longer? Who is really being used by the most high? If you want man's way, man's title, then you have to do it man's way. But I'd rather do it Yahweh. So y'all, with that being said, that's my time. My brothers and sisters, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed weekend. As I pray for you, pray for me. Thank you for listening and tuning in. Until the next time the most high say the same. See you when I see you. Y'all have a blessed one.